volunteer opportunities, uh, places to get educated on in things like invasives and endangered and things like that. So um, you mind if I put some of them in touch with your volunteer coordinator? Oh, for sure. That'd be great. Yeah. 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 Hello there, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Mary. How are you? Hi there. Hi, Pete. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just finishing up another meeting, so if I'm in and out, I'll be back. <laughs> Hello there, Mr. Bob. Hi, oh, Mary. <laughs> if you uh, if you read the minutes, uh, the question we had when we were talking today has been answered. Use your family to be on your own. You know, this is this is this is why we do this stuff. So this, gotcha. You know, it helps follow your life. It helps people. Um, and hopefully, you know, Gallery is a place you can go for after your senior no choice. Sure you feel hopefully. You no. Well, Roger. Hi, Bob. How you doing? Pretty good. Your feet dry? You know, I went out about 11 o'clock last night walking, and I, I got a soaker. <laughs> the water had, here at this condo had come right up over the break wall, and it had, uh, flooded the sidewalk. Yeah, they uh, uh, one one of the condo people that live there full time at, at our place uh, talked to Kathy and uh, said that our retention ponds are, you know, we're up about a foot over the bottom of the palm trees. Wow. Thank you. Whoa. <laughs> Good night. What floor, what floor are you on? We're on the second floor, so I don't have to worry about flooding, but uh, as long as the as long as the tree limb doesn't hit break a window, I normally okay. Yeah, we had a guy electrocuted in uh, out on Anna Maria. Oh, geez. I think it was in his own house. I think his he must have had some flooding in his basement or utility room and washer. They don't and have basement. They don't have basements there. I know they don't. Uh, <laughs> but, so he had one. Good evening. Oh, hi, Jennifer. Hey, Jen. We're talking about flooding in uh, Florida. Oh yeah, quite a bit. That's where I am still. <laughs> one of the uh, one of the pictures that I keep seeing is a couple of sailboats. Yeah. And that that's in uh, uh, just south, just by St. Pete. It's a place where we go for for dinners once in a while. Uh huh. Well, we had one one or two break loose out here in uh, Sarasota Bay too. Yeah, yeah. And they went up on the rocks. The guy stayed in the boat and kept, kept the bilge going. <clears throat> That's crazy. <laughs> Probably dangerous. Somewhat uh, dangerous, but he was trying yeah. to stay in his boat. Okay. Well, 7 PM on the dot. And so Call the meeting to order. In attendance tonight, we have Mary West, Roger Cook, Bob Zielinski, Drew Quigley, Dave Joya, Kristen Cassio, and Jennifer Pusatier, and from town board, Pete Marston. Also, Jennifer Parisi. Oh, and Martha Ludwig has just joined us. So, First thing on the agenda is the uh, minutes. Did everybody get a chance to read the minutes from October? Kristen, I did get your email. Sorry about that. We did add you to the the, the new revision. Thank so you. you're on there. Thanks. <laughs> um, any updates or? I'm good with it. Okay, so motion to approve the minutes from October. Indeed. 
Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great, thank you. Moving on, Pete. Um, for the town board report, can you give us an update on uh, South Point and Thermo Fisher as far as where those projects stand? Um, okay, um, South Point is just, it's strictly a concept at this point. Mm -hmm. um, we, the town had an approved concept 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, they've since tried to change, they've changed their project a little bit, um, changed where it was going to be. The wetland has moved. So there's, they basically just come up with a new concept and it's really not an approved like plan by any means. It's just like, this is kind of what we're thinking. We're going to do our work now. Um, do you guys relatively agree um, that this would work? And yeah, we, I mean, we gave them the go ahead to continue moving, but okay. it, is, it is miles. I mean, miles right. from, from, from anything. The biggest okay. thing is they asked for is they wanted to um, um, change their sewer model. They changed, did some sewer modeling and they wanted to change what the perceived sewer district would look like um, just because they were actually building where they weren't building before and they're not building where they were going to build before because again, the wetland was moving around. Okay. So, um, and what they're offering or what they showed us makes sense, not just for them, but as a town, it would actually behoove us as a town to allow them to do that. It would connect a couple of our uh, stations together. It would actually make our town system work better. Um, now, keep in mind that our town system, I mean, this has been, this project's been talked about on and off there for, I don't know, since before. I really cared, you know what I mean? Um, it's been around <laughs> right. a while, you know? Right. So as, as we've made changes to the sewer modeling for Grand Island, we've always had in the back of our mind that this is coming. And, you know, we've kind of worked so this would fit when it when the time was right, you know? So, mm -hmm. but as far as that going forward, that's really, really far from happening, especially in its entirety, you know? Mm -hmm. Even if they got some approvals, I could see maybe a piece of it being built, but then I could, you know, my opinion is, is that they're not just going to come through and build the whole thing in a year. You know what I mean? So um, okay. it's highly unlikely that you're going to find a developer that wants to build assisted living um, townhouses for sale and then single family homes. Um, usually one's resume has A, B, or C on it, not A, B, and mm -hmm. C. Right. Um, <clears throat> again, that's just my speculation and my personal feeling. Um, but you know, if we see more plans, we'll definitely let you know, but right now it's, it's in essence, a caricature of what could be, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, uh, I know people are excited about it, you know, on both, in both directions. And I don't know that there's much to be excited about yet, you know? So, okay. I, okay. I'll say that, uh, Thermo Fisher Pete, has, uh, a oh, I think, uh, Pete, I think Roger has a question. Okay. Yes, Roger. Clarification. So when you said the wet. This isn't in the minutes. So when you said the, the wetland is moving around, I just, I just wanted clarification. What did that mean? They've redefined what the, where the wetlands are or what? Well, the, the town, I'm gonna, I gotta raise my speaker up so I can hear you a little bit, Roger. It's, it's okay, I don't need detail, I just was. Um, so, I mean, from the time it sat dormant, um, the wetlands had moved. You know, to be honest with you, there's, there's beavers in there. So oh. beavers built dams and the, and the wetlands moved and the significance of the wetland has moved. Um, so the project was dormant long enough where they had to go through their whole process again with DEC uh, approvals um, to understand the wetland and be you know, looked at. So in that process, you know, I think this plan started back before there was wetland, you know what I mean? And they said, well, we'll, we'll build here, here, and here. Well, the spots they were gonna leave undisturbed were the highest, driest grounds on the whole property. So I think they changed their whole uh, idea there and said, okay, well, we need to preserve the wetland. So let's build on the dry spots, you know? Um, I do remember seeing from what they brought us, there was uh, virtually no wetland disturbance by any means. They, they really literally went right around it. Um, they, I mean, I think it was less than two acres on the whole project, if it was even that. So that was, 
that was good. And it left a lot of green space, a lot of open space. Um, so it wasn't like a real high density area, if you will. So um, it had some diversity, which is nice. Um, the zoning, the, the, I guess the densities they're looking for in their development are very, I would say in tune with what's around it as far as lot size, as far as multifamily attached housing like in the duplexes. Um, so they weren't really going outside the box any means. They were pretty much giving us a little bit more of the same, but new. Um, but again, it could change four more times before we see anything get built there. You know, This is just part of the, part of the process. Okay, thanks Pete. Anybody else have any questions about South Point? Okay. Um, and then your input on Thermo Fisher project. So, so Thermo Fisher is, uh, that's an approved project. They're gonna do some expansion over there. Um, it's gonna be in the backside. So it won't really be visible from the road, so to speak. Um, you there? Oh, hi, Bob. Hi. Bob was waiting a little bit. I apologize. I was speaking and wasn't watching my, my check-in. Oh. oh, okay. Um, so um, that is an approved project. They are moving their business model around a little bit. They have taken several, several employees out of there and sent them to the, the old Canon facility. So they have actually shrunk their workforce, which is working on Staley. Um, from what I understand, this new uh, addition will be mostly a manufacturing type deal. And um, it will probably bring it back to where it was, but it will not bring it ahead of where it was. So it's basically, they, they have more employees, but a lot of them now are on at the old Cannon facility. So it's okay. a, it's, it's a, I think it's pretty, it's production, it's production area. Um, it doesn't use more, extremely more water. I mean, it had all the right, it answered all the right questions. So um, we are concerned about noise. We are concerned about the area around there. So we're keeping a good eye on it. We've, we've had a couple supplemental meetings after just to kind of make sure that they're, we're keeping their feet to the fire. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Pete. Anybody okay. have any? And questions? it will add jobs. So. Yeah, I yeah. thought I heard that. Yeah. Oh, Roger has a question. He does. In, in your earlier report, the you mentioned the planning board was also con concerned about um, traffic issues. I was, has that been addressed? You know. Um. Is that a? It's an, I know they've met with traffic safety, and it's an ongoing thing. Um, it's an open dialogue. I know they had some some serious concerns about the crosswalk and the brightness of the lights at the crosswalk and if the crosswalk was sufficient, um, things like that. So as far as I know, they're still in open dialogue with the, the uh, Traffic Safety Advisory Board. And so all we can do is just keep working on it, I guess. You know, yeah. um, It's just a difficult spot. It's just down a country road, you know what I mean? Um, but it's, it is what it is and we'll just do what we can with it. I think we said at the, uh, one of the meetings, I, when I put the minutes together that we would try to get more information from the planning board on this, I guess maybe their deliberations or whatever. Mm -hmm. but our, since we're in, interested in economic development, that we, it would be uh, appropriate to get more information from the planning board. I, yeah, we, we've had those discussions and uh, um, I think there's, I think uh, Supervisor Whitney's working on some sort of detail going to all the boards shortly. So it's, it's not just EDAB, but it will be kind of a better way to decipher when projects come in, where to send them. And I, I know that EDAB is on the radar for that, so. Thank you. Pete, yep. Pete is, is there anything happening on the planning board that uh, we should know about or chime in on? Right now? Right. Uh, right now, there's not a lot. It's kind of the off season, if you will. Um, okay. there, we're working on something for it's called the Complete Streets Program, which is an extension of, uh, you know, an ask from the long range planning, you know, and the long range plan mm -hmm. to just do more of a deep dive into our streets and trails and all that other stuff. Right. Uh, so, so they're working on that. Um, and what else were they working? They were looking into some long range, or I'm sorry some LWRP, which is the water revitalization. Mm -hmm. um, just some, just some uh, initiatives on that, just to kind of have a look at it. Um, 
but there isn't a whole lot of plans for it now. There. Sorry. Okay. There isn't a whole lot of plans really coming forth. The only thing we've seen recently is um, certified auto brokers. Um, okay. Where they're, we're upgrading their facility, which is going to be really nice. Um, they're really investing a substantial amount of money there, which is good because it's our gateway to Grand Island. We don't want it to look bad. And so far, right. they've, been, they've been a really good steward of that area. Okay. And uh, I'm confident that's going to continue. So. Uh, Okay, great. So. Okay. Um, yeah. One other thing, I'll, I'll throw at this board because it, it's kind of it kind of goes in your wheelhouse a little bit. Um, as you, as most of you know, I, I'm kind of the guy that I guess tweaks the zoning and stuff like that. Uh, if we see some issues, we see some things we like and we don't like. Um, one of the things we're looking at right now is um, uh, density living in our north south central business district. Okay, so basically apartments in your in your central districts. Mm -hmm. um, I, I said, let's put a caveat into our zoning that requests commercial be built with residential. So in other words, to basically push mixed use. Mm -hmm. um, so if you wanted to build apartments in, in town center districts, that you include some uh, a percentage of commercial with it. Um, and again, mixed use was a word that came again and again out of our comprehensive right. plan and our sure code was our code does not sh really enable it, nor does it support it, nor does it tell you how to do it. So um, that's something that, that, that I've been investigating a little bit. I talked to the board about it and a couple of them gave me some information. A couple of them didn't, um, but that's okay. Um, so I would imagine in the next upcoming month or two that we're probably gonna send something off to the planning board you know, with some percentages built in, kind of pushing the commercial use there. Mm -hmm. um, and see where that goes. And when it does, I'll make sure this board has, has, a, has a look at it and understands it as well. Um, I would think that being the EDAB board that you would like to see some more commercial elements pushed in um, and some fresh space, um, right. but you may, you may think differently. I don't know. So let us, let us, uh, before the rubber hits the road, you will see it. Let's just say that. Right. Yeah. I would like to add and if, if, um, Definitely want the boards, the EDAB boards thoughts on, you know, their thoughts on mixed use. Yeah. Um, I'm all for it. I think it's, it's great um, from both aspects as far as, um, you know, adding more consumers and adding more businesses to Grand Island. So, um, yeah, I, and I mean, my ultimate fear is we're just going to build out our boulevard with, with high density housing and then mm -hmm. there's going to be no room for commercial. Right, right. You know what I mean? We're gonna we're gonna go too far the one way. Yeah. So I think building a caveat into the code, the zoning, to and, and again, you could go in and get a variance to not do this, but mm -hmm. it's gonna show developers and show builders, listen, this is what Grand Island wants. Can you meet that? You know, because they always right. try to meet our code before they try to go around it. You know. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's more of an initiative and just a different way of thinking that we need to take if we're gonna support our master plan. Of course. Thanks, Pete. I Does have anybody a question. Have... Yeah. Okay. I have a Go question ahead, about that, please. I'm yeah. sorry, my camera's not working. It's been, I got to get a hold of my IT department and I haven't done that yet. So I apologize. Um, I was just curious, uh, Pete, about your comment that you're the one who tweaks the uh, zoning. What's the process for making zoning adjustments? Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm all in favor of mixed use. Um, but I, I'm just a little concerned about the, the phraseology of you're the one who tweaks the zoning. What, what's the actual process for that? Well, I guess what I'm saying is I, if, if somebody's going to bring it forth, I'm the guy that usually does. Um, the zoning aspects are a little bit more in my wheelhouse than the rest of the board. So if we see like a general initiative that we want to follow, this one being supported by the master plan, I'm usually the one that brings it forth. Um, I usually work through the process with engineering and code enforcement to understand how it looks on their end. Um, and then we will usually, I'll talk to the board and we will send something out to like our advisory boards, say for example, the planning board, um, the EDAB board, stuff like that. And then we, we will put it to a public hearing. I don't, I don't solely control the zoning. 
it, but I'm seem to be the one that initiates most of the processes that make changes. I'll, I'll say it in a different way. You're the, you're the guy that understands it out of the, out of the rest of the board and will, and sees the, uh, the need to bring it forward and, and address it. Yeah. Well, thank you. And, and uh, you know, the rest of the board does understand zoning, but um, I just maybe have a little bit more experience with it. And I've had a lot of experience with the master plan as it was written. And I understand where our code does not meet it. And I'm just trying to bridge the gaps, if you will. So, so you see yourself or what I'm hearing is kind of like an initiator, but there yeah. is a process that it would go to all the boards and everything else. Well, that's great. I, yeah. I appreciate that. I just wanted some clarification. So, so thanks for being that person who's willing to uh, put yourself out there to initiate things. So yeah, it, I often worry about the, the longevity of my truck tires, but I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to slash, but, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, it, this is what our master plan says. This is what everybody supports, but our code does not. So, mm -hmm. okay, we, we, need to, we need to start aligning this stuff. If, if we really want, if this is really what we want, then we really need to make changes in here to, to drive us to our direction. So, um, and again, there is a process. There's no, uh, I'm not the, uh, um, I don't snap my fingers and change the zoning. That's not how any of this ever should or would work, so. Uh Pete, there, there may not be, but are there any materials that you might be able to share with us about mixed use and, and whatever you guys are sort of going off in terms of your, you know, as you're looking into this, is there any, are there any materials that well, be relevant? I mean, most of this in my eyes is driven by the master plan. Um, and again, I know that it was a big thing and everybody said, you know, mixed use is good. Mixed use is the, is the way of the future. Mixed use is... If you're going to put density in, you need to put commercial in to, to um, support it. Um, and I look at my code, our code book, and I look at it through my perspective, and I'm just like, this isn't even close. It's like we're talking about two different towns. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if that is truly what is wanted on Grand Island, which seems to be because everybody supported the master plan, then um, you know, my input is this, these are some changes you need to make if you want to get there. You know, uh, and then we put that out there and we let everybody else decide if maybe I'm right and maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe they spin a little bit different. You know, if if we put something together and the boards come together and say, we don't really like this. OK, then I go fish, you know, and that's the way it is. So. <laughs> Can, OK, any other questions? Jen Pusatier, um, I just have a quick question. Um, I don't even know if you can answer this, Pete, but it kind of goes along with the whole South Point thing. Mm -hmm. um, being that Mesmer Dairy or that area over there is for sale, I have um, two questions. My thought is that once South Point goes in, that's going to become a really desirable place. Um, <coughs> and I see it's for sale. And my question is, is that I know there were concept plans that were going around for that area at one mm -hmm. that spot one time. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that if someone was to come in and buy that property or buy that, you know, the building or whatnot, that they would have to go along with what the concept plans are that, you know, had come out at one point? Um, they could, somebody could come in conceivably with that concept plan, buy that building, mm -hmm. and build exactly what the, con you know, the approved plan mm -hmm. depicts. Um, I don't know that it's, you know, it says, for, so it says for it's sale, true. but I yeah. don't know if it's really for sale. Okay. I don't know if they're trying to sell um, space in it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they're trying to sell the spare land. I I've heard a lot of different things. Big you know? signs up there. Yeah. Yeah. I saw, I saw the sign. Yeah. Um, but yet I've, I've talked to the guy who owns the building about right. different things. Right. And he still seems to be kind of charging forward. He's just, uh, okay. um, I will say he's a little bit confused with COVID's input and sure. influence. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I guess it's yeah. wait to be seen. You okay. know? Okay. Yeah, I, I just had one idea in my head. I thought was going along with that, and then to be honest with you, I saw the new big signs, and I was like, "Oh, okay." So, thank you. I, I'm not. I'm not afraid to say that that might not be a bad place for mixed use. Right. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? So, yeah, um, you know, and mm -hmm. that could be somebody else's dream. You know. So. Thank you. Thanks. I have I have one question for um, for Mr. Morrison. How are you doing? I'm Drew Quigley. Everybody. Hi, Drew. How are you? Glad to be, be a part of the board. 
with the when Thermo Fisher they say they're going to add jobs. Do they? Is there any incentive or or um, push for them to to hire folks from Grand Island to keep you know to offer jobs there first, or are they just going to they're, they're just going to fill the best candidate with what it is? Or Erie County, if it, if it came down to that, or is that more on their on their side? Um, well, I guess I guess the short answer to that is no. Um, okay. They could they could pretty much hire who they feel is best qualified for the position, you know. Um, I don't know if they they put any weight to island residents or not. Um, yeah. I can't say that, um, but you know, it, it definitely creates opportunity. We'll say that, you know. So um, I ultimately, um, even if they're, I've seen this in my personal business. Um, I've had customers for years that. I never knew didn't live on Grand Island until they actually buy something of substance that I needed to, to deliver to them. And they'd say, oh, I live in Williamsville. I'm like, well, you're here every year. How's that happen? Um, they're like, oh, I work at Thermo Fisher. Or, oh, I work oh. at Phineas Cobb. And so, I mean, from an economic standpoint, that's not all that bad, you know? I, just, I was just curious about how that, how that, yeah. how that rolls out. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody else have any more questions for Pete on those subjects? All right, then moving on to the market analysis RFP. Um, I know that we have submitted it through the website and Facebook um, over the course of last month. Pete, have you heard anything from Rhonda as, or Mary, have you heard anything um, I get, received any questions from any of the um, people that are applying for the RFP or submitting have, quotes? Yeah, you, I have you not have received it? any correspondence, uh, okay. any email um, or anything in regard to Okay. That. Yeah. So the deadline is November 30th. So um, I'm just gonna throw this out there to everyone we submitted, we posted everything about mm, a month ago, extending the deadline to November 30th. Do you feel that um, people are just waiting till the deadline to, to, they're still gathering information to submit the RFP? Or do you think that you know, maybe it, we need to try other forms of publication or to get the RFP out there. Maybe we just don't have the responses at all. So I, I tried to figure out exactly where it went after our conversations. Mm -hmm. and obviously it went on our Facebook and our website page. Um, I, I got that it was sent out. Um, so I, I'm sure it made it in the dispatch. Um, probably the Buffalo news, but I don't know that it went any farther than that. And, uh, okay. Okay. I, I was hoping that it went to some trade journals and stuff, but I don't, I can't confirm nor deny that that happened. Um, cause it was just the, it, with the COVID and the timeline and everything got a little bit, the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing. Um, I don't know, excuse me, how far it went. So I'm, I'm concerned about that. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, how active companies that do this type of work are looking for this type of work right now, you know, mm -hmm. the way things are. So that being said, I guess I just made some more questions. <laughs> right. Hey Dave. <laughs> hey Dave, you got any suggestions since you've done this a bunch? Yeah, we should, I should, um, I could send it to my statewide organization that sends out a, a weekly email blast and I could get them to include it. That'd be great. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Is that, Dave, that would be that would be, I think, the ticket right there. I mean, that would that would put it to the next level. Let's see if we get any players that way. Um, and the the town board did did authorize EDAB to announce to advertise for this. So that is encompassed, you know, mm -hmm. so it's nothing. It's not an ask that needs to be made. OK, great. Um, and then as far as the the financing goes and the grant that's in limbo. Dave, do you have a status on that? Well, I think limbo is probably a, 
nice way of putting it. Limbo <laughs> may be, I, I do know that the state has not issued any kind of award letters for anything as of late. And this is going mm -hmm. back several months now. So, and that, that ranges from awards like this to infrastructure work to company specific incentives for expansion. There's a, the state has a, uh, they had a PPE uh, initiative that the governor announced I think probably June. And there were a host of companies that kind of stepped forward and there was, there was grant dollars associated with it. None of those companies have gotten any kind of a for, uh, form letter and it's really screwing up their financing. So I think, unfortunately, we are so far down the pecking order on mm -hmm. the, that um, I, I don't want to say this would be the case, but there's a good chance that that grant may be delayed indefinitely or just be canceled. Hmm. Okay, well, that's that's good information. I think that um, we need to talk to um, the town finance department and and see what we have from a budget standpoint to to try to make up for um, that grant and maybe still be able to make it happen over the next year. So I yeah. think we do have we have a good start. So I think it's still possible to move forward with it. Um, so I guess we'll just have to, to see. Time it'd, be will probably, tell. it'd be probably good though to rule out the grant or not. Being, you know, but yeah, we could should we yeah. should we well we have I believe seventeen thousand. Um, encumbered from last year and including this year. So 7,000 from last year and about 10,000 from this year um, to put towards that grant. I'm hoping that we can either encumber some funds, all of those funds for the, for the next year to, to put towards um, that RFP. And hopefully the town can um, budget some more money to, to, cause we're, we're estimating, um, what was the total amount we were estimating for that? Was it, or that we had, uh, the grant was for 30,000? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll so just to, we'll just have to see what the, what the RFPs come back at. Right. Uh, and, and if, if some of the people that Dave ends up you know, that gets it through through Dave's efforts now. I mean, we may end up having to having to give them extensions. You know, if if they're only going to see it next week or something. Uh, right. You now this may drag out a little bit, but you know, if something comes in at the twenty thousand dollar level, yeah, we might be able to do it. But we'll, let's just see what we get. Mm -hmm. So okay. we went when we went through our budget process. I asked about encumbering money. And um, I was kind of told it's pretty hard to encumber unless there's something going on or we have a uh, invoice in play or, or we're interviewing or something like that. So it might be difficult to say we're going to encumber all this and we want more unless there's a little bit of a plan. You know, in my eyes, and, and this is just my opinion, you guys can take it for what it's worth. Um, I, I don't think it would, I think it would behoove you guys to, to, to pen a letter to the town board saying, listen, this has been, uh, we're having trouble getting people to apply for this. We, we are pretty confident that it's not gonna be, come to fruition before the end of the year. And, you know, we may not get the grant. And the grants are definitely pushed back, if not canceled. Um, and just make the town board aware of that and try to understand their, I hate to use this term, but their threshold for pain as far as the, the cost, you know, so maybe they're willing to take on more than maybe they're not, you know, I can't speak for everybody else. So does that make any sense to you guys? Yeah. Yeah. I guess we'll, we'll, 
have to consider that and and then just table that till till next month and try to decide in the final hour you know after the deadline and right and see what we have okay see what the circumstances are at that point and possibly make a motion to to write some sort of letter to the yeah. town asking for some if you've got um, some idea of the number I mean, if we if we get something back from somebody with an estimate, it it'll be far easier to write that letter and to and to write the history of what we haven't spent over the last two budget years, you know. And you know, you'll you'll stand a better chance of writing a letter somebody might might listen to. Mm -hmm. So I think we table it till we get something back in next month's meeting. Yeah. I agree. Bob, I okay. think you're right. I think a thumb wag would help, you know? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, then we'll table that. And um, the next item on the agenda, um, Martha and I, the, was the chamber event at uh, Veranda last month. It was a networking event. Um, it, Martha, do you want to speak about the event and how it went. Oh. Sure, as soon as I come off a of mute. Yeah, there we okay, go. Okay, sure. Uh, okay, okay, great. You know, I um, that was my first experience with anything like that. And so um, I thought it was really healthy to see the variety of um, businesses and organizations that came. So that was really nice to see. Um, you know, uh, to me, it seems like there's greater opportunity there. And I don't know what the answer to that is, as far as connecting with these um, different businesses and what their needs are, um, you know, with the chamber. So I, I'm just a little unclear about um, while there was some networking there, like where we are versus um, or in connection with the chamber. Um, so that was my only thing as far as that goes. Um, you know, where do our, our roads cross and where do they diverge? Um, but I thought it was really healthy to meet people that are um, establishing businesses newly or long term here on the island. And then what are our opportunities? Like uh, this one gentleman uh, was looking to he wanted to wait until spring because of COVID, um, but he represented an investment company that was looking at coming on um, the stretch of Grand Island Boulevard where all the new um, office, you know, opportunities are. And, um, you know, so something like that, I think was great that he was thinking about Grand Island for that piece, because that speaks to the fact that um, someone must feel that there's some dollars to invest if you're an investor and you're looking to work with people here on the island. So uh, yeah. what were your thoughts, Jen? Um, yeah, I thought it was a great event. I also wanted to mention that Jen Pusatier was there as, and I wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, as a new member of EDAB also, she's a director on the Chamber of Commerce and Pete Marston was there too, our fearless leader. So, um, <laughs> so uh, Jen, do you have anything that you want to add from a chamber perspective? Also, as being a new member of EDAB, how you think the event went? Um, I think the event went well. Um, like I said, we are doing a lot of, uh, we pr pretty much are trying to rebrand the chamber and we've mm -hmm. done a lot of work with inside the chamber. Um, one problem is, is COVID like everything else, you know, <clears throat> trying to, get people out and about. We had, we got a lot of positive feedback and our goal um, on Vienna who ran this event is that she would like to go back and um, kind of get feedback from each one of the businesses that came to the event and then ask for what they would like to see in networking going forward and what we can work together with them on and that. So while I think it was, um, it was positive um, for everybody. I, I agree, you know, with Martha saying that, you know, there's a, there's a lot more opportunity 
out there that needs to be touched and you know in between the economic development and through the chamber. Um, but hopefully that'll be our goal, you know, and, and we can build that bridge. I, that's what I'm hoping to do being here. So um, I just think a lot of it is to be determined until we can, you know, businesses are just trying to stay afloat right now. <laughs> so it's hard. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Um, anybody else have any questions about that event? Um, if, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd love to say that uh, I went there with several hats, one of them being a business owner, one of them being uh, a councilman, one of them being the EDAD type thing. And I thought it, was, it made a lot of good connections for a lot of people. Um, you know, oftentimes in these meetings, I mean, the auspice is definitely to, to economically develop, but we also have a lot of businesses here that are doing well. And we, we have businesses here that are expanding. Right. Um, you know, so that is that is something that's that's almost as important as attracting new business, making the businesses you have expand and flourish. You know, so I think those are good connections and that's good, good information to think about. I mean, here you have like, for example, Thermo Fisher adding new employees. You know, they're, they're not, they've been here. They're just going a little bit deeper. You know, that's good. You certified auto brokers, they're adding on. They have a greater, they're gonna build a better facility. Um, they're gonna sell more stuff. They're gonna make more tax dollars for Grand Island, sales tax. You know, those are all good things. I mean, not necessarily do we always need to find the greatest, newest business. Sometimes it's important to, to nurture the ones we have to grow more. Great. Great. Thanks, Pete. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, that was the comments that we have for the, the chamber event, which was great. And our final item on the agenda, a round table, if anybody has anything um, that they'd like to bring up. Uh, the floor is open to you. Could I ask a question that everybody knows the answer to, but as you age, you start to lose the memory of what you've already talked about? <laughs> uh, that caveat, what is the status of our video that was done? Is it being used? Is it finished? What's we are going on. So yes, it's finished. Um, it is published on the town website. There's four pieces to it. There's a live, work, and play, and then there's an, an overall video, which is a little bit longer. So and it's the first three videos I mentioned combined. Um, we are. That's what the market analysis is for: is to determine. Um, not only that was part of it to um, we created the video first, then we go about the market analysis so that they have some tools to try to um, give us an idea of what we're looking for from from a market standpoint that gives them a good idea of um, what Grand Island is for and, and is the foundation um, of the, the, the market. And then over, besides that, it also like the, the, the video did a lot for the, um, the comprehensive plan. So, and it was based on the comprehensive plan. So, and the comprehensive plan was mostly about um, the economic development of course, and the nature of Grand Island being ecotourism, which helped us get the market analysis grant because this market analysis grant is correct me if I'm wrong, Mary and, and David um, is was heavily weighing on eco tourism. Is that correct? So hey, have we shown that to any groups on Grand Island? Anywhere we have it? we have promoted it um, in the early stages. Uh, we could certainly try to develop a plan on our own to, to keep that moving. I think what we were hoping for is um, we were saving our, our money for the market analysis um, instead of using it for uh, just helping, you know, finding someone to help us just market the video. We were has hoping it, to get a whole plan first. Has shown for the Chamber of Commerce? Pardon me? 
has it ever been shown to the Chamber of Commerce in a meeting? Yes, yes, yes. Well, I don't know if in their meeting, but we did send them, as soon as it was live, we sent them links. Yeah, we saw them all, and I believe it's also on our website. Okay. Has it ever been, has anyone ever reached out like to the Welcome Center or given that maybe to get approval in some way? I mean, could they put a spot on the big TV with that? Even if it's even a 15, they, 20 second spot, even if they piecemeal it together. Does anybody have a contact at the Welcome Center where we could reach out to them and ask them? Um, yeah, I could go through, Renee's gone now, but I could go through and see what DOT guys I have. And, and then um, I forget, I know, I can't for, remember her name now, but I could try. Okay. I think it's Holly uh, now, who's the manager there. I'm not totally sure. She but... was the one that was working down from Renee, but I can't remember her name right now. Yeah, um, I think, I, I don't know if the, if anybody had, had brought it to their attention yet. It, it's something we can do. Uh, I think that all gets controlled through New York State. So mm -hmm. it would be, um, you know, kind of a, a, an approval process for them. And I'm right. not sure how amenable they would be, but there's no harm in asking. And, and probably have to go through Taste New York, don't you think, Kristen? I um, think so. Yeah, they, but they, yeah, they they will go through. Um, you know, it's I'm not sure who exactly. I think it's the um, is it the Empire Development who are the tourism people? Okay. They may be the ones that control the content. Okay. Um, Actually, uh, I'm pretty sure. I used to. Uh, I'm. I'm just blanking a little bit, but I. Um, I. I'm gonna guess that it's maybe Empire Development that the, the I Love New York people that yep. control the um, all the messaging inside the facility. Mm -hmm. um, what does the Cornell Cooperative Extension? Oh, Mary, Mary you're muted again. Oh. Uh, the Cornell uh, Cooperative Extension, aren't they somehow involved in some way with that? Yeah, I believe the um, the the store manager may be uh, through them. It, it's like there's several entities. The, the building's owned by the um, uh, New York State Thruway. Then you have Cornell Cooperative Extension. And you have ag and markets, and you have you know there's a, there's a bunch of different sort of controlling entities there, I believe. Um, so, but I think the first the first easiest logical step would be to go to the the manager there, and find out what the process is, because I think that I think everything funnels through through that person. Mm -hmm. um, Jen, Jen Pusatier, this when this video was first done, that was one of the places we identified would be a great place to to have it loop. Um, yeah. If you have some connections there, I mean, it's authorized to go out there. So if you got some connections, run with the ball. Okay. If I could, if I could help enable you any way, I will. Okay. I okay. also have contact with um, Destination Niagara USA, John Percy. I mean, he might have some other ways to help. He does, you know, basically the tourism. He's the CEO of Niagara County and they're what they do with, you know, uh, advertisement and whatnot up there. Maybe he could, I sent him a quick email. He could maybe direct us some places of some things that we might be able to throw that out to too, or names. Okay. Is that okay with everybody? I'll, yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jen. Yep. I just, um, uh, just yes, want, Roger. Well, I, I think we elected the New York State oh. Senator. My, Sorry, Roger, you're breaking up. I was out of town, but I, we, oh, okay, N never mind. I, we didn't I, hear your question. I, that's all. Can you hear me? Yep. Oh, okay. I said Sean Ryan has been elected now as our state senator, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I've been I've been out of town, but I was down here in Florida working on the election. But uh, if there's a way, I don't know what. You know, I think at some point we should talk to Sean um, and see what in what ways he can be helpful. Mm -hmm. Sean's a friend of a lot of us, and I think that to the extent that he can help move any of these agencies, I mean, 
I don't want to mo say we should do it on our, I, I don't want to do it on my own, but I, I do think we need to look at our assets in terms of our political leadership. And Sean, Sean has certainly been a friend of uh, a lot of us over the years. So I don't know if he can help move things in terms of tourism and that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you, Roger. Um, anybody else have anything for roundtable? I have one last comment to make before we adjourn. I um, just wanted to. I just want to put one thing out there, and hopefully, Jen, I'm not stealing your thunder. Um, Probably. <laughs> am I? What are you going to say? I'll let you go. <laughs> I, I was just <laughs> no. All I was going to say is um, uh, we're we're closing to the end of the year, and for those of you whose terms are ending, um, we're looking to to get your letter of intent for the for the for the next term. If you could have that. Um, sent to me and and copy Pete Marston um, by the next meeting, say December. Um, we would appreciate to know whether you plan on staying and renewing your term or not. So so you stole my thunder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but actually, though, I, I, if, if you don't mind me saying, um, the board is pretty adamant to interview early. And if somebody is not willing to come back or doesn't want to come back or whatever, um, we want to be able to fill all our boards first meeting and our reorg meeting in January. So the sooner you can respond and say, I, I would like to re up the better um, just so we can get our work done. So we're not leaving gaping holes in the board, um, you know, and having to interview multiple times. So for those of you that are up, think quick. <laughs> yeah. It's a dumb question, but how do I know when I'm up? <laughs> the, all the um, term limits are listed on the website, but I will tell yes. you that the two people, there's two people. Uh, I being, I'm one of them, which I plan on renewing, and Bob Zielinski is, is the other one that needs to renew. So there we go. There's Thank two of you. us. You're welcome. So I just wanted to know if I had an action item that I had to take care of. <laughs> <laughs> like Not yet. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Uh, motion to adjourn. Before that, I'll tell Pete that I can probably have my letter changed from uh, with the supervisor's name changed and reissued from three years ago, probably by tomorrow. So you'll, you'll have it shortly. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. Right. Martha, you have another year, so I just looked. Okay, okay thank you. I was trying to remember when I'm off. Are these three-year terms? You. Yes, they're three-year terms. All right, that thanks. makes sense. Okay. Now I'll make the motion to adjourn. Okay, thanks, Second. Bob. Second. <laughs> All right. Because I just um, love seeing my name in the agenda. In the <laughs> yeah. All right. You may not see it, but Bob. <laughs> Yeah. Well, everybody, have a happy Thanksgiving. We won't Good see you oh, right. until December. You. That's so true. happy Thanksgiving. And, uh, Safe Thanksgiving. Yes, exactly. Yep. All right. Take All care. Right. Everybody stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Bye.